Welcome back to the Small Business Mindset. Today, I want to talk about six strategies to make you and your business stand out. We are in an environment we are where we are inundated by communication and social media and all kinds of different influences, competition, people doing similar things that we're doing in the marketplace. And I want to make sure as a small business owner or something, somebody that wants to make a difference, how do you stand out a little more differently so people notice you and ultimately drives more clients, drives more profits and drives your business. So to get started, First and foremost, my first tip and strategy on how to do this is show up and be consistent with your messaging for your brand. This could mean a bunch of different things. If you do have a social media platform and strategy, posting regularly doesn't necessarily mean posting multiple times a day, but make it a consistent, regular message. Where I see people and businesses fall short is they might put a whole bunch of information out there, whether you're doing email blasts or you're blogging or you're posting on social, whatever whatever vehicle you choose, they do a whole bunch at one, one week and then you don't hear from them from another month. I would rather you see as you structure your time and your resources, if you can only post a couple times a week, post a couple times a week. I would rather you see be more consistent with your messaging and how you reach out, how you show up in the world, than be all or nothing. The purpose of this is that your clients and your customer base are going to see consistency over time. If you think about, if you're like me, I still listen to my radio when I drive in the car, Think about other kinds of brands that are constantly, consistently being out there and being in front of you. Turn on any local radio station and some of the things that are going to pop up and be in your ear constantly, I guarantee you number one is going to be car dealers because car dealers realize, you know, car purchasing is a major purchase. It's something you don't, don't do every day. You maybe only do it once every few years or more, but when you're ready, you're ready. And you want to be consistent in that messaging to be constantly in somebody's ear. So they're going to pick up on that message immediately wherever they're at. So think about things like that. The, the other part of showing up is that I want to encourage you as an individual, whether you're a business owner or not, show up and be present for your commitments. There's one thing that frustrates me more than anything in the business world is when I set a meeting with someone, even if it's exploratory or it's a volunteer committee and people consistently don't show up. And I'm sure you can think about those people right off the top of your hat, people that you're like, you know what? They, they're never, they ne they're never there. They're always late. They always cancel at the last minute. Don't be that person. For one thing, it really destroys your integrity. If you're someone that constantly isn't showing up to things, physically showing up to things, whether it's on, you know, virtually or in person, but if you say you're gonna be somewhere and you're gonna show up to a meeting, darn well better be there. The last thing I want for people to think is that, you know, you're you can't handle it, you don't know what you're doing, you can't handle a schedule. Now, yes, I do realize we all have emergencies. Stuff comes up. But also thinking about those people in your life where the emergency comes up all the time, that's not an emergency. That is just poor planning or a poor choice of commitments. I think sometimes we get overwhelmed and maybe we do overcommit ourselves. I think what speaks to your integrity more than anything is if you did commit to something and then you realize, you know what, I don't have the time or the energy or the resources to stay committed to this task or this volunteer opportunity or what have you. It would look better on your behalf if you stepped away in a professional manner and say, listen, I overcommitted. I'm not able to go forward with this and be respectful, be professional. You will gain a lot more respect from your peers and your client base if you can gracefully bow out than consistently not show up. Okay, next tip, be responsive. Again, in this day and age, communication is key. If somebody reach out to you, a client, a prospect, somebody that might you may not even want to do business with, but you need to get back to them and say, hey, listen, I at least got your message. Maybe you don't have the answer for them of the question they're asking ex at that exact time, but what people love the most is the fact that you acknowledge they made an inquiry, they reached out. They just want to know, hey, you got the message and, and you're paying attention to them. And even if you say something as simple as, thank you so much for your call, your text, your email, I will make sure and get back to you tomorrow by noon. And then come hell or high water, you gotta get back to them by that timeline. I don't know if you've heard the old adage, you know, um, under promise and over deliver. Make sure your responsive timeline, responsiveness timelines is within a wheelhouse you can manage. Now that doesn't mean 
that if someone leaves you a voicemail or sends you a text or sends you an email or reaches out to you on Instagram and DMs you, you get to lay low and not respond to them for a week. I, I don't recommend that at all. In fact, I think you should respond minimum in 24 hours, if not by the end of the day, depending on when in the day they're responding. If it's later in the day, maybe you wait till the next morning. But it's those quick little, hey, listen, thank you so much for reaching out to me. Can I please respond to you tomorrow at noon or by the end of the day or the end of the week, whatever it is. And then stick to those deadlines because that goes back to number one, showing up and making sure you're promise, making promises on those commitments that you made. Number three, be resourceful. There's a lot of times in my industry and I'm in commercial real estate, I can't handle or I don't do something that someone's asking me to do. Meaning if someone comes to me with a residential real estate question, I don't work in residential real estates, but I have a lot of wonderful people that I consider colleagues that do. But sometimes people get confused and they don't, they don't understand the difference. And I do have clients that I worked with on commercial deals before and they'll say, hey, listen, I really want you to work with my son, for example. Him and his wife are looking for a new house. I'm like, how exciting. And they go on to say, oh, and we so much loved our relationship with you. You did such a great job working with us on our business and our space needs. We would love for them to work with you. And we think you're, you know, we, you're the best and we just want to refer you. Gosh, what a, what a great compliment to have. And what a great thing to have referrals. But I want to be resourceful to them and I don't want to just turn them away and say, oh gosh, you know what? I actually don't sell anything residential. In fact, that's just not my area of expertise. Instead, I'm going to be resourceful and say, that's wonderful. Let me connect with them, understand what their needs are and say, listen, I have three great resources that I'm going to point you to. And in fact, I'm going to give you a introduction. So it's a warm welcome and that you can tell me and, you know, be responsive to me is, is this person or that person or the third person I send you, they might be a great fit and others might not be, but at least they have the calmness, calmness and confidence to know that, you know what? I heard them. I'm going to take care of them and I'm going to be resourceful enough to make sure they are lovingly passed off to someone that can help them with their specific needs. I got a call from a client the other day whom has been a wonderful client over the years and we've done multiple deals and together um, and he had a request. He's like, listen, I have a special meeting and I'm going to be in your town where you work and live because um, we've worked in other markets before. I need a private meeting room. Can you help me out? And I said, and so this is not something I'm not going to get paid for it. Uh, it's not something that I could provide automatically. I have a conference room within my office space, but it really wasn't the right setup they were looking for. And I said, you know what? Absolutely, I can help. So what did I do? I started reaching out to my resource network, other people that I've worked with, other groups that I know that have space that could accommodate them very nicely. And I, I reached out and said, listen, I have this client. Here's the client. This is what they're looking for. Could we, could we figure out a way to help each other? And you know what this person said? Absolutely, because they saw opportunity in that as well. It might mean down the road that my client could become their client. And by offering up something, again, if they had the space and the time, as small as a meeting room that was comfortable and private and allowed this group to do their business and to make their plans, it was a win-win for both of us because I was just became a great resource to my client outside of the everyday work we do with each other and then was able to be a connector with another group that could also you know generate some business out of this just by you know being resourceful to each other next be authentic this kind of goes back to two as far as like what's your what are you really good at and where does really your lane of business really really you know focus and, and be the most successful you can be I think we tend to want to be a one-stop shop and a be-all end all for everything. You're like, well, yeah, I can do it. It's it's in it's kind of in the mix. But if you really get down to it, is that really what you're good at? Is that really where you provide value? This is a hard question to ask yourself sometimes. Um, I had another call recently from a referral client and said, great, um, this, this client of mine, I wanna pass them off to you. This actually came from a residential real estate agent who has a client that was looking in the commercial space. I said, yeah, absolutely, and this happens all the time. As we got to talking, 
this gentleman had um, was was leasing a building, so he was a tenant in a building, and he was already in conversations with the owner to purchase the building. So it was not a building that was on the market, so there was not a listing to be had. And what he was looking for was some guidance and insight about the actual value, and he wanted something more certifiable so he could bring back to the owner that he was already engaged with to be able to make an offer and to finalize the financial obligation and the sale. So I could have inserted myself and tried to figure out a way how to bring value to myself to the deal. But after I spoke with him for a few minutes, I realized, you know, what he's really looking for, he's looking for a, an appraiser. He's looking for somebody that can, that can perform a report for him and that he'll pay for, but a flat fee. So he can certifiably say the building is worth this at this point in time, and then he can complete his transaction. Of course, I'd offered him the opportunity to, hey, listen, if you need assistance on a consulting basis to walk through the contract or get you through to closing, I am available. But in this particular instance, I you know, was authentic to him and say, hey, listen, that's really not something, yes, I can give you market value from a real estate perspective, but I think what you're more looking for is something that's more certifiable within your industry. I, I you know, I know it scares people sometimes to say, hey, listen, I'm backing off of a potential business opportunity, but at the same time, I bet your client base will be a lot more receptive. Even if you say, you know, listen, you would be in better hands if I point you in this direction. And here's why. I think the authenticity and the honest, honesty about what you can do and really what kind of help they need will actually get you much farther than if you try to kind of mash it all together and just make it stick. I always clarify with my clients and say, listen, here's what I can provide to you. I can provide this type of service. This is what it'll look like. This is how much it'll cost. Is this something you're looking for? Or, you know, here's here's another option for you. And please don't feel obligated to take to, you know, to take what I'm offering or to point you in another direction. What truly do you want? Because that's at the name of the game. What do you want as a business, you know, owner and provider? And what does your client need at the end of the day? Sometimes they're not the same thing. And be okay with being authentic enough to let that go. Because I guarantee you, if you're that type of person and you're that type of business, they will absolutely remember it and come back around the next time, whether it's them themselves or refer the business, because they're like, you know, she was so authentic with what she's capable of and pointing me in the right direction and put my business needs above her own. That's being authentic. Last but not least, some more tips and strategies to make sure you stand out as a business and as a person. Don't be afraid to take risks. I know throughout my life and career, I've been challenged and pushed, and actually, it's been scary sometimes. You're like, I don't know if I can handle this, or I don't know if this is for me. If it's interesting at all to you, investigate it a little more. I always like to take calculated risks, meaning I evaluate, is this something that's gonna cost me money? Meaning I have to you know, come out of pocket to invest in this to move forward. Is it gonna cost me time? Do I have the time to really sit in and listen and investigate and commit to? And do I have the resources to do it? Um, sometimes it's just a learning process, understanding what the overall risk looks like. That risk might be going after a certain type of client, you know, one that you maybe haven't haven't worked with before and haven't done a transaction in that area. Maybe they're in a more specified industry. Do you have what it takes to do that? Sometimes it just might be understanding what their needs are. And believe it or not, I am a firm believer in that you can learn a skill pretty easily. You can learn the tactics and the wherewithal and the strategies behind it. But sometimes it takes a lot of the, the listening capabilities and the communication style and the understanding and the relationship you have with your client base or prospective client base to make sure you're the right fit. You might be the best expert in your lane, but maybe you don't jive with that client base. So don't be afraid to take risks and say, hey, listen, you're really not the area I wanna go in and that's really not how my firm works very well. I will raise my hand right now and the reason why I'm, you know, I've started the small business mindset is because my wheelhouse is small business owners. Those small business owners might be brand spanking new startups and they're a one person shop or they might be billion dollar industries. But what they have in common is they function a little bit more on a smaller scale. I tend not to work as much with big corporations, you know, Fortune 100, Fortune 500 companies. That's really not in my wheelhouse. 
probably because the market I work within tends to be a little smaller. I'm not in a major market like a New York or LA or Atlanta or Dallas. I work in more of a tertiary market. So understanding the needs and the business dynamic, I've realized is that you know where I take risks is narrowing my focus, but really taking a deeper dive into the individual industries that I serve. So I hope as you go forward this year, um, growing your business, you've taken these six strategies to help stand out for you and your business this year.